Hey guys, it's William Congreve here, and in case you haven't already figured it out from the video, um, I am going to be doing my first Kerbal Space Program thingy, um, and basically, it, uh, Kerbal Space Program, it's a game where you get to build rockets and launch them, and I really enjoy it, so I, deci so I decided that it would be a part of the channel. And uh, so I just felt like playing Kerbal Space Program, so then I decided to record myself playing Kerbal Space Program, and so I am now going to record myself playing Kerbal Space Program. In fact, I already am. So let's start playing. Um, you can get this game on Steam. It's a great game. I really encourage you to get it if you like the look of this Let's Play. Start a new game. Uh, let's call it Congreve creations. Okay, and then um, picking a flag. Uh, I'll just take this one, just because um, I don't want to waste all of your time picking a flag. And now, if you have played the game before, you'll already notice that I do have mods installed, but I don't have any mods which are going to let me like ludicrously cheat, so all these mods are fairly balanced mods, and I feel like they add a lot to the game, so I'm going to go ahead and use them. Um, but don't click away. Um, I won't have a list of the mods I'm using in the description or anything. I've got a lot of the ROM Pharaoh laser powered things. Got some. I think I've got the Nova Punch pack in here. Um, I do have the strange space station, space building thing in space construction kit, but I don't. I'm not really using that. I've got Mech Jab. I've got. Um, some KAS parts, and um, I've also got ISA MapSat, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's going to work yet, because I only recently installed it. Regardless, um, here we go. So, um, for those of you who had no idea what I was just talking about, that is completely understandable, because Kerbal Space Program is not a very big game yet, but it is very fun. So, I'm going to just... Uh, show you guys the basics by building a very basic rocket which will get me nowhere near orbit because this planet is huge. Earth is huge, this is huge, they're about the same level of huge and uh, it does not make it easy to toss things into orbit. Um, still, uh, let's see, just gonna build a quick rocket, need a command pod, gonna grab the command pod mark one. Oh yeah, I've also got um, the flight, the avionics pack, and I've got the crew manifest thing. So, command pod mark one, and then I'm pretty much going to build the simplest rocket I can. Just going to throw on a parachute so that um, Congreve Kerman doesn't die. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be making myself a character called Congreve Kerman. Not going to use Mech Jab on this flight because that feels a bit sort of cheating ish. And I don't think I'm even going to use Congreve Kerman on this flight because. I don't want him to die horribly if this goes wrong. So, um, excellent. So now that I've decided on the flight, all that's left is to build the rocket. And um, I'll explain what I'm doing, or rather, what I've mostly already done as I do that. So, um, what I've got here is a parachute, followed by the command pod, followed by a decoupler, followed by a fuel tank with an aerospike rocket beneath it. Aerospike rockets are pretty much just regular rockets. Well, okay. Aerospike rockets are completely different than regular rockets, but their effects are pretty much just like regular rockets. Um, basically, they are a lot of small rocket engines arranged in just the right way to generate a lot of thrust, despite being pretty low down in an atmosphere. And I feel sure that I've lost you guys by now. Um, ultimate props to uh, the people who aren't lost, because I keep going into things which are completely out of the realm of reasonable knowledge. So, just going to call this Premiere, just because it's my first rocket, um, and then just launch it to show you sort of what's up with this game. So, you see, now down here it shows the stages in my rocket. I've got three stages here. The first stage ignites this engine, the second stage it decouples this, and the third stage fires off that parachute. Now I want the decoupling and the parachute to take place at the same time, so I'm just going to drag them into the same stage. Then I'm going to bring up my throttle pre-launch, 
Um, I don't have any stability alignment systems on this. So if I did, though, I would, um, right at the bottom here, I would toggle that light on to indicate that my stability alignment systems would keep the rocket level. Or rather, that they should try to keep the rocket level. But this is just a very simple rocket, so I'm just going, basically going to launch it, let it get probably not even very high in the air, because this is a small rocket, and then hopefully land gently back down here. Now, if these guys could talk, what they would tell you is my rockets do not usually land gently back down here. They usually either go into the cold void of space until the people commit suicide from the fact that the game won't let them uh, starve to death or asphyxiate, or they explode in gigantic fireballs. All that aside, though, this one has a parachute, a feature that is actually on a surprisingly and scaring and worryingly small amount of my rockets, but it probably means that Jebediah is going to make it back just fine, so the parachute is great, and we should launch this before you all get bored. So you can see down here that I've already put my throttle up to 100, and I'm just going to press the space bar to fire the rocket, then I'm going to use the W, S, and D keys to try and keep this little thing here pointed on that. This is a um, three-dimensional attitude indicator, which means that it tells me whether I'm going like north, south, east, west, and then if I'm going up or down, and if I'm rotate, and if I'm sort of spinning while I do that. Hopefully, I'll be doing none of those things, and I'll be staying straight up this entire time. I don't think that's likely given my past performance, but you don't know my past performance, so I'm going to keep it secret from you and just launch this rocket and hope I prove myself wrong. So here we go. And there we went. And, oh, whoa, uh oh. Okay, and now I am fighting with the rocket to keep it somewhat level. Oh, 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 this is bad. The, uh, okay. Um, and there goes the fuel. So, yeah, that was a pretty small fuel tank on a, uh, on a rocket which was big for that size of fuel tank. And so uh, my rocket's still climbing, still climbing, and there uh, you can see the vertical speed indicator just went down, so now it's falling. So I'm going to pop the parachute. Then I'm going to stare in horror at the parachute's failure to deploy, but it actually won't deploy until it's like 500 meters above the surface on Kerbin. It's a function of the size of the planet or the gravity or something. Um, but yeah, so now we're in free fall. Speaking of free fall, you do not know how horrifying free fall is until you're in free fall. Uh, I practice stalls in my Cessna well, in the Cessna that I borrow for my flight lessons this uh, previous weekend, and it feels really horrible. Just like, you're flying along, you're kind of fine, you're kind of not knowing what, you're kind of a bit worried about what you're going to be doing. You pull up, cut the power, drop the flaps, slow down, stall alarm goes off, you slow down even more, and then suddenly you're no longer sitting in your chair. Suddenly you're plummeting towards the ground, which suddenly becomes all too close. It is just terrifying. Um, now, some of you might be uh, disagreeing with me, and some of you might have a basis to disagree uh, with me, like you've uh, um, para-jumped or something, uh, or you're an actual pilot and you've done stall training and never found it scary. I, I don't know. I might just be a complete wimp, but it's terrifying for me. It's not terrifying and sort of terrifying like, ah, I'm never doing that! Terrifying, but it, it's like adrenaline rush terrifying. Anyways, I think I've managed to keep you entertained through a process which would normally be really boring, which is just watching the thing land gently on the ground again. And I just ran out of subject matter. So close and yet so far. So now I can have my guy like get out of the capsule, do a little victory hop, or two, or three. That's enough victory hops. Okay, somebody's gotten a little victory hop happy, so let's just end the flight here and go back to the vehicle assembly building where I'm going to build a much larger rocket now while I just pretty much say whatever's on my mind. So let's call this new rocket um, Heavy One. Okay, and then um, I'm just going to grab a large AI guidance unit to be the command pod for this thing, and then build it down under the AI guidance unit. Um, 
and this rock is going to be one which can reach orbit and can do all sorts of heavy lifting and things and I'm I'm unsure as to how to start it um okay so let's I'll probably add something in between here but for now I'm just going to do this and then grab the little mother by the way these things descriptions oh really nice uh, the little mother is a lot of rocket engines arranged together and it's very powerful then I'm uh, going to go to structural world of my decouplers are grab a stack decoupler and put that in there then grab it a fuel tank grab a fuel tank for the next stage because you always got to have fuel otherwise you're just carrying a whole bunch of rockets to well rather you're not no because rocket implies fuel otherwise you're just carrying a whole bunch of engines to orbit and and nobody wants to carry a whole bunch of engines to orbit I mean not unless you're assembling a gigantic kinetic battering ram with which you're going to destroy your own spaceport I I deny everything about a gigantic kinetic, kinetic battering ram that is being used to destroy a spaceport. Um, le le let's just stop the let's play here before I incriminate myself. But um, seriously, uh, yeah, so you gotta have fuel for the rockets, and uh, um, so yes. Now, uh, you can see that I'm just doing something really simple here. Basically, I'm doing fuel tank, fuel tank cone combo thingy, then, then engine, then fuel tank, then larger engine, then fuel tank cone combo thingy, then l engine, and then I'm going to have a fuel tank and then an even larger engine underneath. And while I'm building this, you can see this rocket is big and very powerful like very powerful but um, I'd just like to say something it's still nothing compared to the Saturn V it's not nothing really it's not but it's still much smaller than it I mean the Saturn V was just so amazing I mean that's where humanity really said to the world Hey, I'm humanity. I'm going to build something huge now. And it completely did. I I went to when I went to the National Air and Space Museum one time, they had an exhibit where they used mirrors to create the effect that you were looking at the first stage, first stage being the lower stage of the Saturn V's rocket engines. And those things were gigantic. I mean, they were vast! Like, I don't even know what to compare it to. Because I know that I'm either going to make a comparison which is uh, too ludicrous, and that's going to draw annoyed comments, or I'm going to make a comparison which isn't ludicrous enough, and that's going to draw annoyed comments. So I'm just going to say the Saturn V is awesome, but if you don't like the Saturn V, you have a right to that opinion. Um... Man, it's it's so hard to say to say your opinion on online without sort of you know making people hate you. And yet I'm still doing it. Then again, people might might hate me. Oops, and the thing just froze. I think that's because I don't have a command pod, and I need a command pod. So what I'm going to work on now, I think, is I think I'm just going to try and um, I think I'm just going to try and. Sh uh, shoot straight for the man well that actually pronunciation differs some people say it with the umlaut thing and some people don't if it is with the umlaut it's like the moon and with it's with the, if it's without it's the man but um i'm talking as if you're all the uh, Kerbal space program enthusiasts and you're probably not you're probably just here to watch my awesome commentary and I'm back to my delusions of grandeur. But, all of that aside, um, what was I going to... Oh yes, I was going to make something to go to the man. And um, how I'm going to make that something is probably it's not going to be very big. So I'll just start designing it. I'm going to use this core for it. I don't think it's going to have a person aboard. No, I want it, I want it to have a person aboard. Hmm. 
I don't think this is going to actually... No, I don't want to have three people aboard, because that's just going to be too big, and it's not going to have the Delta V to make it. Um, so, yeah. Right now I'm designing my command pod, and I often notice that when I'm playing this game, the rockets, they get a lot more detailed the higher up them you get, because you know that you're going to spend a lot less time with the fur having to worry about how well you built the first stage compared to how well you built the final stage. And so I'm putting more work into this final stage here. Um, gonna grab some RCS thrust, some rocket control system thrusters so that I can sort of just connect so that I can lose my train of thought because I'm multitasking, uh, so that I can control my rocket more accurately in space, or rather not more accurately, just more powerfully. And now the entire purpose of this thing is going to be to put a map sat up there just so that I can investigate the surface of the moon for monoliths or something. Um, so there's the map sat. Also this will be the chance to see if the map sats actually work for me. Um, also going to put in a, whatchamacallit, and I might as well put in one of these things, just cause. Going to put in a Romfair a laser system stack. There we go. Now it's getting a long nose, um, but I don't mind. I, I have nothing against long noses. Stop accusing me of having something against long noses. Uh, but that aside, um... Let's see, do I want to put a grappling hook or something on it? Um, hmm. Let's go with... Well, I'm not sure what exactly I'd be grabbing. So grappling hook seems like the safest thing to use. Okay, so then... Um, I also need power aboard this thing. So, just gonna grab myself some generators. Uh, one generator, two generators, uh, one generator. I can count the number of generators on my spaceship! Aren't I special? But, okay, so... Trying to think if my spaceship needs anything else, because I know that if I have to cancel the flight just so I can put something else on it, the viewers are probably going to be a bit mad at me. Um, don't think I really need anything else. I'll grab some external cameras, though, because I have this weird thing where I like to, rather than her actually sort of, I don't know how to say it, almost controlling the ship as one normally would, controlling the ship in the normal manner, I prefer to go to in-vehicle view and then just watch from the cameras inside, from the cameras on the outside and from my tiny window in the vehicle. Um, so I've got the cameras now, got my mapping satellite. Um, right, so now all I need is to... I'm going to add a backup parachute because I'm a bit worried that if that one jerks too much it might not actually catch the thing. Or rather, this top nose part might rip off. Um, so I'm going to um, add a decoupler and then start piling engines on this thing. Or rather, not just engines, but piling rockets on it. Because rockets work! So, um, I'm going to slam the door. Or rather, I'm not going to slam the door. Somebody else is going to slam the door. And somebody just did slam the door, so we are right on schedule. Everything is going fine. This place is totally not exploding around me. I have really gone insane, haven't I? This isn't good. I should just finish the Let's Play before turning myself into some sort of psychiatric ward. So, um... I don't know how long I'm actually taking with this Let's Play. I might end up cutting it up or something because it turns out too long. But I think I'm going to make this mission. I'm going to do this mission before it ends. So, um... Here we go. Uh... Figuring out what I want for my next part. Don't want that. Here we go. This is what I want. I want to go up to this size of rocket. 
so that I can have one of these things. These things are fairly fuel efficient, right? Yeah, but it's still going to burn through my fuel really quickly. And yes, I, I know I've started talking to myself. This isn't a good sign, but it's going to burn through my fuel really quickly. That'll be more efficient. Uh, yeah, this is the most efficient one. Then I'm going to look for a decoupler. That looks about the right size. Then I can grab another uh, rocket part thingy majiggy. And that's ramping up the size a bit faster than I would have, but I don't really mind. Uh, wait, my rocket will, though. Hmm. I suppose I. Is this really enough delta V? I think I might get this stage into orbit. Delta V, for those of you who uh, don't know what I mean, just when you hear me say delta V. Delta V, the Greek symbol delta, is used in science and math for the change in, or the difference in. And so delta V is the change in velocity. To say that a rocket has delta V means that it can change its velocity. So, and you change your velocity with rockets. So a rocket having a... So just like a backyard rocket which you shoot into the air doesn't have much delta V because it only changes its velocity a couple meters per second and then it's com and then it's just done. Whereas something like Saturn V has gigantic amounts of delta V. And delta V isn't everything because, I mean, you can have mountains of delta V but if you have a tiny thrust-to-weight ratio, you're never going to get off the ground, so it's irrelevant. But let's leave that to the rocket scientist here. That, that's me. I, I heard myself say, let's leave that to the rocket scientist here. And then I thought, uh, are they going to assume that that's me or not? Insecurities. But um, let me think if I have enough delta V on this thing. So... I'm getting this stage. This stage seems more artistic than utilitarian, and I want it to be useful. Oh yes, ha ha. I, I can hear you just saying in your head, so then why did you ask for it to be... Uh, no, I actually can't hear you saying that, because y you make better jokes than I do. Yes, that's right. I've heard your jokes. Did, don't pretend that... Uh, you, I can't read your mind. Don't pretend. You know I can read your mind. Ew, I wish I wasn't reading your mind right now. Okay, but, all stupid comments aside, um, this rocket is actually looking pretty good. Not astoundingly good, but pretty good. What I'm going to put here is a massive nuclear engine, which hopefully will, have, will generate a lot of delta V because it's highly efficient. Yep. So, excellent. Um, okay, and you should know, my launches don't always go exactly the way I want them to first flight, but just warning you about that. Hmm. Really, I should have called it something other than the heavy one, but it doesn't matter much. Going to remove Jebediah Kerman and um, go to my crew roster tab. Make a new Kerbal, Kerbal who will be me, William Congreve. Give him a lot of courage and almost no stupidity. Completely unlike the real world me. Whoa. My rocket is trembling like it's drunk or something. And I forgot to put Mech Jeb on it, so I can't even launch the thing. You know what? I'm going to try launching it by hand. It's going to go horribly wrong, because I doubt even Mech Jeb can control this thing. But, I'm going to try. I don't even have stability alignment systems. This is going to go so badly. First sign that the launch has gone badly. It ain't launching! Next stage. Whoa! Unexpected! Bad! Very bad! Abort! This is the part where I wish I'd programmed in an abort. I'm gonna have to do the abort manually. Um, okay, stack separator, 
And away! Whee! I just wasted uh, loads of government money, but it's okay because... Oh, crap! No! Parachute! I... He... I... Me... Restart flight! And I was never born. This... is strange. But it's just the way the game works. So I'm going to go back to the vehicle assembly building. Notice that, now this is what I was talking to you about, thrust to weight ratio. The lower stage, apparently, does not have enough thrust to weight ratio. And that means that the rocket is not lifting. That is, these rockets can't put up enough thrust to lift the rocket above them, no matter how much rocket fuel is poured into them. So I need to grab more powerful rockets. Um... Or I could just not have the bottom stage. I'd be sacrificing some Delta V, but... I don't know. Let's see how it is without the bottom stage. Maybe it'll work better. I always find the bottom stage loses a lot of Delta V to uncontrollableness anyways when I build a rocket this large, so... By the way, if you're wondering why I'm talking like, with, like I have my mouth full, it's because I was just chewing on the cord for my headphones. Um because I chew on things every once in a while. I, I was never really house trained. Okay, you've discovered me. I'm not actually a human. I'm a, a weird sort of dog thing, which can do Let's Play videos. And that's why I was insane a few minutes ago. See how it all fits together? Well, you don't, because I'm insane, but... Alright. All of that stuff aside, um, maybe I should get into some game criticism, because all I've been doing so far is talking about how awesome this game is, so I'm going to criticize it a bit during my next launch. Um, one thing that I don't think it realistically simulates is how smart the people at... Or rather, it does simulate this, because you can't do it, but it, it takes away from the game experience when you realize... This game, it really makes you realize just how smart the people at a place like NASA is. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, gonna quickly change the Kerbal again, because I can. Um, but the people at NASA, they are... Oh, no! Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> did did you see that? It was like it just leaned over and knocked Jebediah coming out. Like, yeah, Jebediah, I don't want you on this rocket. Just... Like, tip, boom. <sighs> Jeepers. My rockets hate me. And apparently they hate me even more when they can uh, make me look stupid in front of my viewers. But I will keep this rocket in check. And I will do that with launch stabilization gantries. There we go. These things can basically just be decoupled later, and they'll hold my rocket together before it launches, so... Blah, blah, blah. Um, these stages are completely out of order. That's something I should fix before I try and have Mech Jeb fly this thing. So, that one is the lower one, so... Um, I probably just want to create this, and move this to here, create this... And that will hopefully make my rocket work perfectly. So I've got Mac Jeb aboard, got everything set, and I'm ready to go for my third launch. Now you know why I play this game in sandbox mode. It is because they have not built a career mode yet. But even if they had built a career mode yet, I probably would not be using it that much, because this game is tough. It's very tough. Despite having infinite resources, it's still tough. William Congreve, uh, because putting things in space, realistically, is very hard, and this game accurately details that it's very hard to put things in space. I mean, planning Hoffman transfer orbits and things, I mean, I bet that you didn't, don't even know what some of the words I'm saying mean. That's just how hard it is to put things in space. And so, 
By the way, I'm not questioning your intelligence there. I'm just complimenting the people at NASA. Um, that's how hard it is to put things in space. And then, so, when you make a rocket in this game, you really just have to sort of test it out to see if it works. And it doesn't always work. But, um, but yeah, the people at NASA are a lot more good at making sure that their rockets work and don't cost their government ludicrous amounts of money because they keep accidentally blowing up their rockets. Or rather, because they don't keep blowing up their rockets accidentally, whereas I do. So, trying to just hit that button. Activate camera. There we go. Um, going to switch to my in-vehicle view for this. Actually, it'll be more humorous to watch my rocket explode horribly from the outside. So I'm going to switch to Ascend Guidance, which means that basically I'm just going to ask Mech Jeb to take my rocket up for me. So, um, everything looks good here. Prevent overheat. It's all that good stuff. Um, there we go. And firing. Oh. Oh no. Um, we're in vertical ascent right now, which means that the rocket is supposed to be vertical. Um, it's then going to do a gravity turn, which is what's going to actually start it spinning. So, while we launch, I'll give you a quick orbital dynamics lesson. Orbiting is constantly free-falling towards a planet, but you're traveling sideways so fast that you miss the ground as you fall. Um, so imagine that my rocket is the planet. I'm falling towards it, or rather, I need something more circular. Imagine my command pod is the planet. I'm falling towards it, but I'm also traveling to the right. So I miss the planet constantly. Like, when I fall uh, to here, by the time I've gotten to here, I actually end up here. And then by the time I've gotten, I've fallen down to here, I actually end up here. And my um, nuclear engine is the one which is firing now. Oh man, this... This is worse than that time I had in the Herobrine, in the Herobrine Pyramid. If there's one thing which is encouraging about this, it's how slowly the nuclear engine is using up the fuel, though. That is great. Speaking of great things, I actually put in an abort sequence this time, so let's try it out. Hey! It looks like it's working! I'm going to switch to IVA for this. I've got one camera focused up, so I'll rotate this camera down so that you can see the ground arriving all too fast. And then once these parachutes deploy, I might cut that one or not, and we'll just we'll sort of see what happens. I mean, I suppose you can look out this window also, but it's not really going to do anything, so I'll give you this control panel instead. Parachutes have deployed because we're now at um, below 500 on both of our altitude indicators. This one is hundreds, this one is thousands. I don't know, I'm not quite sure what this one is. I could do the math, but... Math isn't as fun as me talking randomly to complete strangers on YouTube. So, um, yep. By the way, the reason you just saw that turn red was MechJeb has a light on it, and that light glows red when it's not in use and green when it is in use. So if I go to here, I can, I'll can i try and put it in use, and now you can see that it is green. Now that I'm going to close this, it's not in use, and so it's red. And then both of the parachutes have activated, which means once my thing is a bit tilted, you can make it get a better sense of how that looks and how that's realistic from the outside. I'm just going to cut this one because I don't want my my guy to get sick. And then, um, huh, I'm landing right on some of the debris. I suppose if this game was more realistic, I'd be worried about landing next to a nuclear engine. But it's not. Oof. Gonna um, maybe deactivate those cameras. Nah. Then this is all one of my mods, the laser system mod, and it lets me do that. This awesome EVA thing, where it looks like I'm actually going EVA, EVA for extravehicular activity. And there, it looks like I just um, switched out of the game window, hoping that didn't just corrupt my entire recording. Gonna do a quick recording switch in case it did. And I'm back, hopefully, and my controls seem to be a bit messed up, so I'm going to try laser EVA beam me aboard. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to go EVA again, this time not use that. 
but I am going to turn on my laser and my lamp because those are cool additions from the laser UVA mod also and then I'm going to walk over to this nuclear engine and destroy it so that it will be safe for every person who chose to live right next to the rocket launch center so then I'm going to use this laser system stuff with my laser I'm going to go explode bing and fire and then explode and fire haha I have power explode boom explode boom I really shouldn't be blowing things up right next to this guy and I've broken his laser okay um explode boom you know what really awesome space pilots do they don't blow up stuff next to themselves using some kind of weird laser but I'm not an awesome space pilot I'm I'm me um but you know what I can also do? I can plant a flag this guy's got a little flag on him which I can plant and there we go site name Williams Folly One okay here William had his first survival crash okay now this is something which you guys might find a bit weird but after playing the game for a while I know how good I am at it that is I know what I can do and I can't do so I feel like it's actually okay for me to cheat a bit as long as it accurately reflects my abilities in the game um, I'm trying to figure out where that last camera is so that I can blow it up um, uh, um, okay it sees my feet Oh wait, there we go. Bingo. Click. Boom. Haha. -ha. Now none of you will see what just happened. Okay. So, um Yeah. But now I know my own capabilities and that means that without I can not get too worried like oh no, I'm cheating or something if I just place a rocket in orbit because I know that if I spent out lots of boring hours going to the via the vehicle assembly building and refining the design a bit and then going back to the launch pad launching it again refining the design I could actually put it up there but none of us want to do that I don't want to work you don't want to watch me work I just want to play video games and you guys want to find a channel which is better than mine to pl to watch somebody playing video games on but you can't because I've got a magical spell on you and here you thought I was all for logic and things. I, I actually am. I pride myself on being highly logical. But, um... So anyways, um, being logical and all, I think that... I don't really think that any of us want to see me just uh, try and refine a design slowly, because, I mean, that's actual rocket science. What you want to me what you want to see is me attempt rocket science and fail horribly. And you want to hear some funny commentary from me while failing horribly. So um made it back to the vehicle assembly building, accidentally closed the program again. There we go. Character is still running furiously. Um jump. Oof. Okay, managed to make him stop running. Oh, nope, nope. He's still running. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm holding down the D key right now and it's making him stand still. Let's try the lamp, the laser, jetpack even. Nope, none of it's working. Okay, so I'm just going to end his flight and go back to the vehicle assembly building where I'm going to build um, Monex. One. 
that's for Man Exploration 1. And that's just going to be a new spaceship, um, which will be called Man X1. And this is going to be a very small probe because I don't want to sort of cheat and put something bigger in orbit around the Man than I actually can. I have done some successful Man landings in my time, and once I just brought a hunk of mass with me to the Man to check how much mass I could bring with me. And so I'm. I make sure not to launch rockets which are sort of bigger than that to the man. Because, well, to, I make sure not to cheat rockets which are bigger than that to the man, because that would be cheating. So this thing is going to be really quite simple. Um, now you might be surprised with how simple it is, but th that's actually pretty normal for satellites. They're usually not very big, and that's usually because even at their small size, they're usually pretty expensive to put in orbit. Um, speaking of putting satellites in orbit, you know, you can actually buy, sort of buy your satellite into orbit if you want to. Um, SpaceX, the people who did the, the, they're the private company which did the space station thing that was all over the news a while ago where they um, were the first private company to bring people to the space station or something. I think that was it. From somebody so enthusiastic about space as myself, you'd really think I'd know more about it, but I don't. Um, uh, they... Uh, um, it's a very strange rocket, I know, but I wanted to give it some propulsion capability, and so I just stuck the big nuclear engine on it. Um, but Anyways, they have their new Falcon 9 heavy rocket, and I'm not sure if they've launched it yet. I know they've done some test launches, and uh, they're you're going to be able to actually s they're going to they can sell people space on those rocket launches. So if you wanted to put a satellite in orbit, all you have to do is fork over a whole lot of money, and you can have your own satellite in orbit. I think they're selling it by like the pound or something, though. So I mean, you're really going to have to fork over a lot of money. However, I have to fork over no money, because I can instantly teleport this thing into... Oh, crap. I just asked it to teleport before setting a target. Um, setting it for the man at an altitude of, what, like, um, a tenth of a mile? That's not a mile, that's a megameter, I think. But I just asked it for a tenth of a megameter. Um, that looks pretty good. Okay, so here we go. Hey, ISA map set is actually working. So I'm at the man. Um, okay. Current position. That does it. Anomalies on. Okay. See how fast I can go. Okay, I can't go too fast or I won't. Or the map won't draw. I can go that fast, apparently. No, I can't. Okay. So here we go. And now the map sat is just drawing me a big map of what the place looks like. And, uh, um, so let's see. So this is the polar view, and it's basically creating two big circles, because you're looking from the North Pole and the South Pole, and I'm orbiting at the equator, so obviously you're just seeing the equator of the planet being mapped. And then this is the ISA view, which is um, sort of more like a traditional map of the planet as it maps. And then anomalies. So I've got one anomaly there, which I probably want to check out, and because it's equatorial, that'll be the easiest thing to check out. And I forgot to put MechJeb on this ship, so that big rocket engine is pretty much useless because I'm too lazy to do orbital calculus in my head. I still know basically what to do to fly a rocket in orbit, and I've done it loads of times before I got MechJeb, so I know that I can do it, so MechJeb isn't really cheating. It's just saving me some effort. But, um... Yeah. Uh... I know that I can do it, but I sort of don't want to right now. You know what, I'm going to anyways, though, because I just like you viewers so much. You, 
you're what stops this from be hearing me randomly ranting to my computer monitor. So I am going to do this just for you. I am going to actually go to the work to, without mech Jeb, figure out how to um, make my rocket fly in a polar orbit rather than in an equatorial orbit. I think I need to point it um, at 90 degrees to my orbital plane to do that. Or rather, no, not to my orbital plane. Because that will be... Yes, to my orbital plane. At 90 degrees to my orbital plane, which will be north or south. And then just fire the rocket engines. And I'm learning, and I'm, what I'm figuring, seeing now is that my rocket does not have enough um, natural torque from its, from this thing here's small thrusters to maneuver. So I should have put some RCS on this, but I'm getting there anyways. Um, here we go. Almost made it. There we go, and. Oh, I don't have SAS on this, so I can't lock it in. It's so frustrating when you realize that. Gonna turn on my rocket, go back to the map so I can see how this looks. And bring it up to full. Actually, bring it down a bit because this rocket has a tendency to overheat. But, um, there we go. And hey, it's actually working. First time I tried, I got it. I got correct what I was meant to do. So here we go. And it is um, doing this. Um. So yeah, how's the weather? Don't really have much to talk about while my rocket reorients itself. It's not as bad as the few times I've made ion engine powered rockets, though. Those things are just. Oh. They're so slow. I mean, I, I was trying to get one to. I, I had one in a solar orbit. Which, it had used nuclear engines to get to that solar orbit. Then I switched over to the ion engines because I needed a lot of delta V and only the ion engines could have that much delta V. I switched over to the ion engines and. Oh, wow! Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, um, my orbit's a bit eccentric right now because I wasn't really keeping myself at the 90 degrees to the orbital plane that I should have been. I should have been rotating my rocket around as this went. Um, but now I've got to burn. Now I've got to do a burn to make sure I don't completely lose the man. Um, you'll notice that my map. You'll notice that my map set is getting much more detailed images now that I'm. Uh, um, at full speed rather than at slow speed, but uh, that's not what's worrying me right now. What's worrying me is the fact that I'm going to go into stellar unless I do something. No! 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 I'm going to go deep space unless I do something. <sighs> you can never go into stellar in this game unless you cheat or spend a ludicrous amount of time doing it, and it, it, it will be annoying if, any, if anybody used the expression incorrectly as I just did, so yes, I am annoyed myself right now for using that expression so incorrectly actually um, trying to figure out where I should be to keep rotating my orbit now I think I'm meant to be here that will be bring my orbit back down in the other direction so what do I want to be I think I want to I want to start slowing down definitely because otherwise the rockets just gonna keep spinning with the rocket engines activated and that's never a good thing but okay so I think that's where I'm meant to be, and then I'm just meant to sort of follow that thing around. Whoops, coming up a bit fast now. Um, until I get into a good equatorial-ish or no, not equatorial-ish, um, into a good polar orbit. There we go. That's close enough to a polar orbit, I think. And then I'm just going to bring the speed back up and let ISA map sat to continue mapping the planet. Or um, mapping map the satellite. Continue to let it map the satellite. Oh, huh. you can see that as it gets further away, the images are getting less detailed but wider spread. So eventually, I'll have a rough topographical map of the entire planet. Gonna switch it to polar so you can sort of see where I am on the planet. And my thing is now making an interesting pass over the South Pole, which appears to be quite hilly. Yep. Ooh, and there's another anomaly there. That's interesting. Um, 
And of course, the ISA map set thing isn't actually collecting this data from the game. It's figuring out what data I should have, and I think it's extracting that from a stored archive. Actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think the ISA map set creators might genuinely have created a thing which actually uh, maps the planet topographically, uh, like an automated computer program to do that. And then, so I'm not sure. I think that it to know it knows more than it's telling me. Like if I asked it to, it could very quickly just map all the planets in the system for me. But instead, it's giving me only small amounts of data. But I don't think that it's. Uh, I don't think that. I'm getting a bit turned around because I'm creating thoughts as they go here. But I don't think that it's actually. Um, unable to figure out what the planets look like. I think it's figuring out what the planets look like as it goes along and then only giving me the amount of that information that I should know. I'm not sure though. I'm not one of those people who learns every little detail about a mod b buff before I install it. What gave it away? Was it the fact that I didn't learn any of the details about these mods before I installed them? I, I just looked for the ones with cool names like ISA, that's an acronym, it's gotta be cool. Fire spitter, that's gotta be cool. Lasers, that's gotta be cool. Um, but yeah, so you can see it mapping out more and more of the planet. And if you're not already in love with this game, I still suggest you like try it out or watch more videos of it or something, because I really love this game. It is just, it's a wonderful game. And, uh, I mean... It's not really even that hard. I I know I'm just so awesome that it sounds hard, but it's really not even that hard because you can sort of choose how hard you want it to be. Or rather, you can do missions to your ability level. Like, right now I'm trying to find strange anomalies on the man. If I wanted to, I could try and find strange anomalies on ELO. Elo. But that would be a lot harder. But the game really is just awesome. It's just got such a wealth of planets and things to explore, and it's just, it's all so awesome. Um, but yeah, so. I've managed to cheat a probe into orbit around the moon. I have no idea how much time I've spent recording this, and I'm having so much fun, but I feel like if I don't stop, I'm just going to end up with a Let's Play, which is like three hours long, because I'm going to lose track of time while doing Kerbal Space Program. But I, I do want to investigate these anomalies a bit before I'm sort of over, so I think I'm... Uh, I can investigate them in a later Let's Play video. I think that this little introduction to Cold Space Program was probably all I need to sort of do. So, I am probably going to end the Let's Play right here, and I could do one of my rants in my awesome, like, goodbye voice, but I'm not going to, because you've heard them from me, you've heard them from every other YouTuber you've watched, and you know exactly what they say. So, just all of that stuff phrased better than I could ever possibly phrase it on my own. Also, something about my friend's channel. And goodbye.